host Kickle and welcome to another episode of American Reef. On today's show we're going to talk about one common saltwater fish disease and how to cure it. Just a reminder, if you are looking for more reef keeping how-to kind of videos, you can check out my Reef Tutor video series. Um, it's available for uh, iPhone, Android kind of users, uh, for iPhone, iOS kind of users. Just download the podcast app and search for American Reef or Saltwater and my podcast will show up there. Uh, if you're an Android user, you can download Pocket Casts and same thing, search for American Reef or Saltwater and you'll see the Reef Tutor video series as well as the other video series show up there. Or if you don't want to watch it on a desktop, you can download iTunes and watch it via iTunes or you can just watch it via a web browser, preferably Firefox. Fox, uh, www.americanreef.com. Bottom section of the page, you'll see kind of the, uh, the uh, video choices that you've got there. While you're there, if you're interested in purchasing some American Reef HPD, you'll see that link on the bottom center of that page. Now, let me set the stage for today's video. Um, I'm feeling a little bit under the weather, right? So I went through the archives to kind of see what kind of videos that I could find um, that would still be very useful for the viewers to watch. And I come across this one about a common fish disease, right? The disease is called lymphocystis, right? Say that 10 times. Um, long story made short, like if you ever go to a fish store, right, you see the fish you want, you bring it home, and within hours you look at it, and there's this clump on this like pectoral fin. Well, most of the time, that's lymphocystis. And so what happened is I was going through the video archives, and I actually found a video where Gary had talked about lymphocystis and how and what he does to kind of cure it. So again, rather than me talk about it, let's uh, go check out that video and we can kind of see what Gary does when his fish, when they come into his shop, have lymphocystis. do basically an episode of check this out and this particular fish we're gonna do the episode with he kind of gives us a couple things to talk about okay. the first thing is that he is a Chrysaurus angel um, it's not a fish that you see very often in the trade okay. it's another African fish which I really like um, the reason that I like uh, this particular angel is they have a great appetite they will just practically eat right from your hands. Now, as far as being compatible with coral, uh, Russ and I saw for <laughs> ourselves, not so great with coral. Especially, uh, like, what, what, uh, like brain corals, right. scalimias, stuff like that. He can, sure. yeah, he's, he's real picky as right. far as, I mean, he's picking at coral, right, you know? Right, right. Soft corals, no big deal. I highly doubt he would bother anything soft at all. Right. But open face, brain, coral, stuff like that, he's going to hit. Now, the thing about the Chrysaurus angel is, Koran angels are always real popular mm -hmm. when they're young because they have those pretty white stripes like that. Right. But they lose them as they get older and they get brown. He doesn't really lose much as far as what he looks like as a juvenile. Uh, he will lose some of the blue lines and they'll just kind of fade out but he always pretty much looks the same. The other thing about this fish is the white patch on his pectoral fin. And it, start, it started to develop a little bit on his side. I call that lymphocystis. 
Um, I'm 99% sure that that's what it is. Lymphocystis is a virus. It is not contagious though. It's usually caused from the weakening of the immune system in some way, usually from shipping stress. I've occasionally picked it off or cut it off if it's only on a fin um, that doesn't always get rid of it. So I kind of just let it go and feed him good. If you continue to pound that fish with food, consider it like a cold. When you're run down and you get a cold, there's sure. really no treatment for it other than just taking care of yourself, getting rest, eating right, and you'll beat the cold. Sure. So what I'm doing with him is I'm feeding him well. I just fed him a scalimia. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately. He's tearing up some coral in here. <coughs> and uh, now, you know how you use that cellcon? Perfect example. Yeah. Cellcon is fantastic for this fish. Take some mysa shrimp, thaw it out, strain it, get all the moisture out of it, and fill it up with cellcon. Right. Fatty acids, lipids, all yeah. those things you need. Because you can see that the fish is healthy. I mean, he looks good. Right, right, right. But remember, it's not ick. That, that is the farthest thing from ick that right. you could have. Right. A virus and a parasite are two completely different things. Right. UV sterilizers, not going to do anything right. for this. Right. This is 100% within the fish's immune system. You just have to beef up that immune system. I mean, it's a very expensive angel, so you have to work with them. You, what are you going to do, throw them away? Right. You don't really need to put them in a quarantine system. That's not what it's about. I would rather see him in a tank where he's going to flourish and be happy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of food in so there. So what are you feeding them there, buddy? All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to give them a little bit of HPD loaded up with vitamins. Now, understand, I've never given him this diet yet. Okay, right, so this right. is his first... Uh, uh, interaction with this food so he's going to be a little skeptical skeptical at first okay so let's see how it responds to it but this is the perfect way to get rid of lymphocystis right, right. this is very common on angels french angels yeah. black angels queen angels uh -huh. any of your bigger species of angels you'll see this very often because you know they're the type of fish that really doesn't like being in captivity at first right, doesn't right. like being caught doesn't like going through the transit once they're in captivity, though, they really respond well, and they do get the, you know, if they have a nice system, they're happy fish. So you can see he's not really sure what it is. He's checking it out, but it's not mysa shrimp, and that's what he's been getting. But the lymphocystis, I, to, to beat it, I, I have to get something in them other than mysa shrimp and brine shrimp because it's limited in its nutritional value. Right. Now, if he won't eat the HPD, then I'll have to do what I talked about earlier and that's take mice shrimp take all the moisture out of it and then load it up with cellcon and just keep pounding them now I talked about if you ever watched our product showcase on HPD you have to be committed to it like I really want to get him eating this so I could fast him from mice and other stuff and make him eat it right. and I guarantee if I can get him eating HPD He'll be completely healed. Right, right. I guarantee it might be a, a little a, yeah. a stretch, but I know I have a good shot. How's right, that? right. Come on, baby. There you go. He just ate a piece. Did you get it? Yep. So we got him to eat HPD. Bam, there's two pieces. So you got a taste of it. Now it's up to him. Do I like it? And believe me, I mean, I, you know, Russ and I want to sell food, but the fact of the matter is that the reason is it works. It's performance, it's value. Everything that I, I preach in American Reef, I mean, this is serving a, a fantastic purpose as far as uh, healing this fish, not just keeping him healthy, but getting him better, getting him off of this virus, this cold he has. And the Chrysoris Angel is one of my favorite angels, so I'll baby him. I'll sit here and hand feed him for a half an hour every day. Beautiful fish. And they get probably eight inches. Really? You know, so it's a, it's a good sized fish. Yeah. Like I said, he'll hammer some LPS stuff. <laughs> like I have a guy that's interested in taking him home tonight. 
and if he takes them home, then I don't have to move them other than to his house. If he doesn't, I'm going to have to move them into one of my upper reefs where there isn't any coral right now. So there you have it. Here you have it, the Chrysoris Angel. How much do they cost, Gary, roughly? Um, 250 